In this screencast, we're going to talk about the seasons. You may remember this diagram from the last screencast. We use this to define the ecliptic, which is the apparent path that the sun takes to the background stars over the course of a year. The other way to define the ecliptic is to say that it's the projection of Earth's orbit on the sky. Another line that's shown on this diagram is the celestial equator, and you may remember from an earlier screencast that that's the projection of Earth's equator on the sky. And you can see that the celestial equator and the ecliptic are not the same line. They intersect in two points, but otherwise they're distinct. And the reason the celestial equator is not the same as the ecliptic is because the Earth's axis is tilted to its plane of orbit. So if the Earth's axis looked more like this, the celestial equator would actually be the same as the ecliptic. But because the Earth's axis is tilted, we have two lines on the sky that are distinct. And the reason we experience the seasons is because of this tilt. And that's what I want to talk about today. So let's jump into that. So let's take a look at the Earth in June and remember that the Sun would appear to be in the Twins or Gemini at this time of year. Notice how at this point the Sun is pretty far away from the celestial equator. In fact, it's 23 degrees away from the celestial equator toward the North Celestial Pole. Now let's go back to our old friend, the horizon diagram. Remember, this is the view of the sky over the course of 24 hours. And this diagram depends on one's location on the Earth. You can see that the blue arrow pointing toward the North Celestial Pole is maybe somewhere around 45 degrees above the horizon. And we'll just call it 42 because that happens to be my location right now. I'm in Andover, which is at about 42 degrees north latitude. So we can draw the celestial equator on this diagram as well. And now knowing that the sun in June is about 23 and a half degrees north of that line, I'll just draw a new line on the horizon diagram showing the path that the sun would take over a 24 hour period in June. And there are a couple of things to notice here. One thing to notice is that that orange circle is mostly above the horizon, which is to say the sun will be above the horizon for more than 12 hours a day in June. The other thing to notice is that the sun rises well to the north of compass direction east. So it rises in the northeast and it rises and reaches a point that is high in the sky, but not as high as the zenith. And then it sets again and it ends up setting at a point that is well to the north of west. So we think of the sun as rising in the east and setting in the west, but actually in June you can see that it rises in the northeast and sets in the northwest. Okay, so let's go back to the other diagram, which I'll call the orbital diagram, and watch what happens as the earth proceeds along in its orbit. As the Earth continues in its orbit from June to July to August to September, you can see that the Sun is getting closer and closer to the celestial equator until ultimately it's right on the celestial equator. So now let's go over to the horizon diagram and see what happens to the Sun between June and September. Notice how that sun that the circle is on drifts toward the celestial equator until in September, it's actually on the celestial equator. And if you look carefully at this orange line when it's on the celestial equator, you can see that now on this particular day, the sun would rise in the east, due east, and it would set in the west. And because half of the circle is above the horizon and half of the circle is below the horizon, the sun would be above the horizon for exactly 12 hours. So the equinox is a day when there are 12 hours of sunlight and 12 hours of darkness. Let's go back to the orbital diagram and keep going. So as the sun continues in its orbit from September to December, you can see that it's getting further and further away from the celestial equator again. And this time it's to the south of the celestial equator. So let's go back over to the horizon diagram and see what happens to the path of the sun between September and December. Notice how it shifts downward toward the south and ultimately reaches a lowest point. And here you can see that the circle that the sun is on 
is below the horizon for longer than it is above the horizon. So at this point in the year, the sun will be above the horizon for less than 12 hours. And you'll also notice that the sun is now rising in the southeast and setting in the southwest. So we can keep following the Earth as it goes around in its orbit. And between December and March, now the sun is going to appear to get closer to the celestial equator again. And looking at the horizon diagram, the sun is going to again drift to the celestial equator until it's once again on the celestial equator. By the way, this is the spring equinox and it occurs on March 20th. And then finally, as the Earth goes from March back to June, the sun will again move away from the celestial equator and this time it will be to the north of the celestial equator. So we're back to the beginning. So there are lots of things to notice here, but one of the things you've undoubtedly noticed is that in June, the days are longer, and in December, the days are shorter. And so the day length, or the amount of time the sun spends above the horizon, is one of the causes of the seasons. But there's actually another thing, and I want to tell you about that now. So you've noticed also that the sun is higher in the summer and lower in the winter, and when we talk about this, we often talk about how the sunlight is more direct in summer and less direct in the winter time. And that's what I want to explain now. So I'm going to explain uh, by way of an example. So imagine you have a flashlight and you turn it on and shine it on a surface that looks like this. And then you take the same flashlight and you bring it over to a much shallower angle and do the same thing. Notice how at the shallower angle, the light is spread out over a larger surface area, and when the flashlight is more perpendicular to the surface, the light is spread out in a smaller surface area. So this is the same flashlight emitting the same amount of energy, but at a steeper angle, the energy is more concentrated, and at a shallower angle, the energy is less concentrated. Well, the same kind of thing happens with the sun on the Earth. During the winter time, the ground receives less energy from the sun than it does in the summer because the angle of the sun is so much shallower in the winter than it is in the summer. And so this is the second big factor that affects the season. So the two big factors are the length of the day and the angle of the sun, and together these affect the seasons. But actually, both of these things result from the tilt of the earth. So now that we've talked about the seasons in the northern hemisphere, it's worthwhile to think about a couple of other locations on Earth and see how the seasons would evolve there. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to clear away the details of that diagram and rotate the picture. And now you can see that the blue arrow, which is supposed to point to the North Celestial Pole, is pointing to a point that's right along the horizon. And uh, that tells us that this location is at the equator. So what's going to happen at Earth's equator? Well, remember that the migration of the sun back and forth across the celestial equator was a result of the Earth's orbit. And no matter where you are on the Earth, the Earth is still orbiting around the sun. And so we're still gonna see that behavior. So here's the sun in June at the equator, and here's what it does over the course of a 12 month period. What you'll notice here is that no matter where the sun is, no matter where the earth is in its orbit, the sun is above the horizon and below the horizon for 12 hours a day. So at the equator, the day length remains the same throughout the year. You will notice that the sun is sometimes higher in the sky and sometimes lower in the sky. And so we're going to see some of that seasonal effect due to the changing in the angle of the sun but it won't be as extreme as it is in the Northern Hemisphere where the sun is always on one side of the zenith and ends up getting quite close to the horizon at certain parts of the year. And so the seasons at the equator exist, but they're much less extreme overall. Let's go to one more place. Let's turn the horizon diagram again. And now you'll notice that the blue arrow is pointing directly to the zenith. And so where do you go on the Earth to find the North Celestial Pole directly at the zenith? The answer is uh, this will happen at the North Pole. And here you can see the sun in June at the North Pole. And one of the really interesting things to notice is that 
Over the course of a 24-hour period at this time of year at the North Pole, the sun will simply be cruising around parallel to the horizon, never rising or setting. And so this would be a 24-hour day at this time of year. And between June and September, the sun will slowly migrate toward the horizon until on the equinox in September, the sun will cruise right along the horizon, neither rising nor setting. And then what happens next is the sun continues down on its path. And for this whole period from September until March, the sun will be below the horizon. So this will be a 24 hour darkness period. And then in March, it will come back up and then slowly move up to its highest point in the sky, which it will reach in June. So at the North Pole, you have some pretty extreme things happening, either 24 hour days or zero hour days when it's uh, night for 24 hours a day. And you get some pretty extreme changes in uh, angle for the sun as well, because the sun is already relatively close to the horizon. And as you move toward the horizon, the effect of the sun angle on the surface area that it's hitting becomes quite extreme. So now you know something more about the seasons. And I'd like to end by addressing one common misconception. It is often believed that the reason we have seasons is that the Earth's orbit is elliptical, meaning that it's sort of like an oval and sometimes the Earth is closer to the sun and sometimes it's further away. The problem with that idea is that when we experience summertime in the Northern Hemisphere, the Southern Hemisphere is experiencing wintertime. And I guess I'll end by suggesting that after you finish watching this video, it might be a good exercise to pick a place in the Southern Hemisphere and draw a horizon diagram for that location. And then think about the motion of the sun over the course of the year for that Southern Hemisphere location and see if you can verify that in June in the Southern Hemisphere, it should be wintertime.